welcome students the next topic that uh, we'll be discussing is the interaction of gamma rays with matter we have been talking about radioactivity and the types of emissions during the phenomenon of radioactivity we talked about the alpha particles we talked about the beta particles and we also talked about the gamma emissions these are nothing but energetic electromagnetic radiations of very short wavelengths so wavelengths can range from around 0.004 angstrom to around 0.4 angstrom so short wavelengths basically means uh, they are highly energetic electromagnetic radiations that means the energy of the photons of these electromagnetic radiations will be very very high so mostly naturally occurring gamma rays or gamma radiations are from the radioactive sources these uh, radioactive sources means the nuclei which emits radioactive particles and radiations so as we discussed before after a nuclei it uh, undergoes alpha or beta decay it may remain in an excited state or energetic state so this excess energy is emitted in the form of gamma rays and as because these gamma rays are nothing but beams of photons energetic photons they have high penetration power they can travel through matter so as we talked about they have a wide range of energies starting from around 100 keVs so technically speaking there is no upper range of energy of gamma ray photons so they are highly energetic and so hence they can pass through matter they also answers and of course they are not affected by electric and magnetic fields so they can pass through matter easily and when they pass through matter they interact with matter so this is something which we have already talked about being highly energetic they can easily pass through matter now the point is these gamma rays when they pass through matter they interact with matter and as such the intensity of the gamma ray beam as it passes through matter it decreases exponentially so if we have let me say a gamma ray beam of intensity i not it passes through an absorber which is any material you can consider through which gamma rays can pass through this is an absorber and it travels a distance x through the absorber so after passing through an absorber through a distance x let the gamma ray intensity be ix so what has been found is that the gamma ray intensity ix after traveling through a distance x of the absorber or matter it is given by i not that is the initial intensity e to the power minus new x means the gamma ray intensity it falls exponentially as it passes through matter this new is called the attenuation coefficient basically it means that the intensity of gamma rays as they pass through matter it attenuates it decreases and this attenuation coefficient how much the gamma ray intensity will decrease with distance is dependent on the atomic number of the material of the absorber so for different materials the attenuation coefficient will be different also of course it will depend upon the density and the photon energy so the attenuation of gamma ray intensity as they pass through matter is due to different processes that occur due to the interaction of gamma ray photons with matter so intensity decreases or it reduces means something happens when the gamma rays they pass through matter 
So this something that we are talking about are nothing but different processes which occurs due to the interaction of the gamma ray photons with matter. So what are these processes? So basically there are three main processes that occur at different energy ranges of the gamma photons. So these are photoelectric absorption, Compton effect or we call it also Compton scattering and the pair production process. So these are three processes or phenomenon that occurs when gamma rays they pass through matter. So which of these three processes will occur? It depends upon the energy of the gamma ray photons. So at very low energies, it is the photoelectric effect that occurs. At intermediate energies, Compton scattering takes place. And at higher energies, pair production process takes place. And what is there is no exact demarcation as such which process will occur. It will depend upon the material also. It depends upon the atomic number jet means the atomic number of the material through which the gamma rays are passing through. It depends upon the atomic number as I said and also the energy of the gamma ray photon. So as you can see the atomic number increases photoelectric effect can occur till higher energies of the gamma rays. So as I said there is no exact demarcation but roughly you can say that at low energetic gamma ray photons maximum probability is of photoelectric effect taking place or photoelectric absorption why we are saying absorption because the gamma rays are absorbed and hence the intensity reduces. Intermediate energy scales is the Compton scattering and for high energies it is the pair production process. So let's look into these three processes or the phenomenons one by one. Photoelectric absorption, what it is. So this is a phenomenon which occurs for low energy gamma photons. Means the energy of the gamma photons for photoelectric effect to occur should be of the order of magnitude as the energy binding the atomic electrons to the nucleus. So basically what it means if I have an electron here, the electron is bound to the nucleus if the gamma ray photon has an energy comparable to this energy with which the electron is bound to the nucleus then the probability of photoelectric effect is more or the uh, photoelectric effect takes place. So in this phenomenon what happens is a gamma ray photon is incident on the electron, it transfers its energy to the electron, some part of the energy of the gamma ray photon goes to breaking the bond with the atomic nucleus, the rest of the energy is transferred to the electron and it takes away the uh, energy remaining energy as kinetic energy so the electron goes away as a free electron with a certain amount of kinetic energy so in the process the gamma ray photon it ceases to exist so this is a phenomenon which is known as photoelectric effect or in this process the gamma ray photon is absorbed so we call it photoelectric absorption in terms of the gamma ray absorption. So when gamma rays pass through matter therefore initially let me say 10 gamma photons are incident. So suppose two gamma photons are absorbed through photoelectric absorption. So the remaining number of gamma photons is 8. Hence the intensity of the beam as they pass through matter it reduces. A negligible fraction of energy of the gamma photon is of course transferred to the atom, uh, residual atom as a recoil energy but that is almost negligible. So basically we can say that the gamma photon it transfers its energy and it is utilized in breaking the bond of the electron with the nucleus and the remaining energy is taken away by the electron as kinetic energy. So this is the first phenomenon which is responsible for reduction of gamma ray intensity as they pass through matter and it occurs for low energy gamma photons. So next for intermediate energies 
is the Compton effect that takes place or we can also call it the Compton scattering. So this scattering is responsible for removing photons from the incident gamma beam. So as a result, reducing the intensity. In this case, slight difference is there. What happens? It's a inelastic interaction between the gamma ray photons and free or weakly bound electrons. So this is important. Compton effect is a kind of a collision between the gamma ray photon and a weakly bound electron or a free electron. So what happens in this case is that this occurs of course for intermediate energies. So in this case, in this phenomenon, what happens is the gamma ray photon, it transfers a part of its energy to the atomic electron, ejecting it while it travels in a different direction with reduced energy. As you can see here, the gamma ray photon it strikes the electron and it removes the electron either if it is weakly bound from the orbit or it goes out with it transfers its energy to the electron some amount of energy to the electron and the electron goes out with a particular kinetic energy the difference here is that the gamma photon does not cease to exist but it goes out in a different direction with reduced energy so how does it lead to reduction of the gamma ray intensity is because the incident beam let me say it's coming in this direction it has a particular energy for the incident beam so this photon that is produced has lesser energy so we can't count it as a part of the incident beam so the incident beam intensity hence reduces so this is a kind of an inelastic collision and this phenomenon occurs for intermediate energy scales so this is a kind of a scattering process. We can say that the gamma photon is scattered with lesser energy in a different direction. So this phenomenon is dominant when the energy of the photon is far greater than the energy with which the electron is bound to the atom. So in the case of the photoelectric effect, the energy of the photon was comparable to the energy with which the electron is bound to the atom. In this case, the gamma photon has comparatively a much higher energy than that with which the electron is bound to the atom. So, we can uh, to the nucleus. So, we can consider that the electron is weakly bound. So, this occurs for intermediate energy scales of the gamma photons. The third effect that we'll talk about, which leads to the reduction of gamma ray intensity, is the pair production process. So what is this? This is a process in which highly energetic gamma photons having energies at least equal to 1.022 MeV, it breaks up into an electron and a positron when it passes near an atomic nucleus. You can see here, the atomic nucleus is there, the gamma ray photon it comes, it breaks up into a positron and an electron. So here the threshold energy we are talking about is 1.022 MeV. There is a meaning to that. The energy of the photon should be greater than or, sorry for the typing error here, the energy of the photon should be greater than or at least equal to the sum of the rest mass energies of the electron and the photon. There is a typing error here. Energy of the photon should be greater than or at least equal to the sum. That means the positron and the electron. Let us say that the gamma ray photon it produces the positron and the electron. So this positron and the electron they have the same mass. Let me call it m naught. So this has m naught c square rest mass energy and this has m naught c square. Suppose they don't have any kinetic energy. So total rest mass energy will be twice m naught c square. Now for an electron or a positron the rest mass energy m not c square is equal to 0 point, uh, 0 0.51 MeV. So the for conservation of energy, the gamma photons should have at least twice m not c square energy that is equal to 1.022 MeV. And sorry for that. Also, this phenomenon occurs 
when the gamma ray photon passes near a nucleus. So under the influence of the electromagnetic field of the nucleus, this phenomenon of pair production takes place. So this is a process in which material, matter is produced from electromagnetic radiation. So this is another process which occurs at high gamma energies in which, uh, due to which, the intensity of the gamma ray decreases or attenuates as it passes through matter. So we have discussed about basically three processes, the photoelectric effect, the Compton scattering or the Compton effect, and the pair production process. So when gamma rays they pass through matter, these processes are responsible for reduction of the gamma ray intensity. So successively, as the gamma ray intensity reduces, either of these processes can occur. It's not that only one of these processes will occur, it may be a combination of one, two, or even all the three processes occurring, which leads to the reduction of gamma ray intensity. So that is all about the interaction of gamma ray intensity, uh, gamma rays with matter. Thank you.